Hi, this is Dr. Lauren Lownan, and this is a lecture on the process of conjugation, one of three possible modes of horizontal gene transfer that occur in prokaryotes. The goals of this lecture are to define conjugation, understand the composition and purpose of the F factor, knowing that the TRA genes are a set of key genes within the F factor, know the difference between an F plus, F minus, and HFR cell, and the difference between simple and HFR conjugation. One goal that I missed here is to understand say to locate specific genes on those chromosomes. So here's my silly nerdy science cartoon about conjugation which is often referred to as bacterial mating because it requires cell-cell connection. Okay, you have to have cell-cell connection unlike the other two forms of horizontal gene transfer and so it gets nicknamed mating or mating experiments. Conjugation is when two cells physically connect through a sex pillus and one donates DNA to the other. It involves something called the F factor or fertility factor, which is a set of about 40 genes. The F factor is found in F plus and HFR cells, and it's required for conjugation to occur. There are two types of conjugation, simple conjugation and HFR conjugation. A little more about the F factor. The F factor is a genetic element called an episome. It contains about 40 genes. The key genes that I want you to remember are the TRA for transfer genes. These are the genes that encode the sex pillus and that also allow the DNA transfer process to occur from donor to recipient cell. There are other genes that are important and other sequences that are important on the F factor but those are sort of the level of complexity that you would get into in an upper level course. And we won't, we won't talk about those here. The F factor, which is considered an episome, and an episome is a piece of genetic material that can exist in the chromosome or outside of it as a plasmid. So an episome means it's a piece of DNA that can be integrated into a chromosome or it can, can, it, it can exist in a cell outside of the chromosome usually as a plasmid. And the F factor is an example of this. So in cells from a particular species where the F factor is located as a plasmid, then we call that cell an F plus cell. So um, you could have a particular bacterial species able to do conjugation and its cells could be, you know, they're, they're still members of that species, but they're also F plus cells, and that tells us that they've got a plasmid called the F plasmid or fertility plasmid, and it contains the F factor. You can also have the F factor integrated into the host cell chromosome, and in that case, it's called an HFR cell. H is for high, and FR is for frequency. It's high frequency of recombination cell. And that means the F factor, the fertility factor, is part of the chromosome. And as this diagram implies, and in fact these arrows should have like pointers on either end, the F factor can go into the chromosome, but it can also come out of the chromosome from time to time. It's a highly mobile genetic element. We use this in the naming of these cells, as I've already implied. F plus cells have the F factor as a plasmid. HFR cells have the F factor and it is integrated into the chromosome. F minus cells in contract, contrast do not have the F factor. They lack the F factor at all and that's important to remember because matings are only going to occur between F plus and F minus or between HFR and F minus. Those are the only two types of matings that can occur, only two types of conjugation. So here's a diagram illustrating simple conjugation. This is what happens when you have an F plus cell and it mates with an F minus cell and the result of this is two F plus cells. So F plus by F minus equals two F pluses. So here's our F plus on the left. It's gonna detect an F minus cell in the environment. It's gonna sniff it out chemically 
you, much like we use pheromones, and it's going to build a protein-rich appendage called a pilus, called specifically the sex pilus. That's going to attach these two cells here, cell-cell contact, right? And then the F factor, which is in a, in a plasmid in an F plus cell, is going to actually unspool and send its DNA over into the recipient F minus cell, and hopefully they're going to stay connected long enough to get the whole thing in there. And if that happens, the result is 2F plus cells, the original donor, and now a new cell that is actually capable of being a donor itself. And that's simple conjugation. So what phenotype has the recipient cell gained through this, this genetic modification? It is now F plus itself. And I should also point out that it will also gain any additional genes that are on the, the fertility plasmid. And in nature, um, these fertility plasmids, as they travel around, they tend to acquire you know, more genes not related just to conjugation. So there can be additional phenotypes gained by this new F plus cell that has just formed. And it's now capable of transferring that plasmid to others. The second type of conjugation, which is called high frequency of recombination or HFR con uh, conjugation, is um, it's similar in that you are going to have to have an HFR cell detecting an F minus and when it, when it does that, it will build this structure called a sex pillar. so you have cell-cell contact. And then what will happen is, instead of sending a plasmid containing the F factor, and that plasmid would be called the fertility plasmid, instead of sending it over to the F minus cell, we're actually going to send the entire chromosome over. And probably this connection won't last long enough for the whole thing to get over, but we're going to make a little nick on one side of the F factor. The F factor is, of course, integrated into the chromosome here. And then we're going to spool this one strand of DNA over and in. It's something called rolling circle replication. And as it comes in, any areas of homology between the recipient cell chromosome and the new DNA being spooled into this recipient cell, they're going to find one another they're going to line up, and then what can happen is recombination or gene swapping, allele swapping, can occur. And what you get out of this is a recombinant cell. It's been altered in that this piece will degrade, the chromosome will not degrade, and it has a different genetic composition than it did originally. So originally this, this recipient cell had the allele C- minus for the C gene, B minus for the B gene and A minus for the A gene. After this recombination event that, that is due to a conjugation, it's got the C minus allele still, but now it's got the B plus allele and the A plus allele. So it has been genetically altered through HFR conjugation. It's only gained, you know, these two genes because these two cells did not stay connected long enough for it to get any more genes. Okay, everybody clear on that? So the timing will really influence how many genes can be transferred into the recipient cell. Now this mating is an HFR mating with an F minus cell and what's, what, what's going to be left after is you'll have the original HFR cell because this will rebuild itself and stay intact and you will have what's called a recombined recipient. Okay just to recombine, it's a genetically different recipient. This cell almost always does not gain the F factor. And the reason for that is it get the, uh, this process will nick this chromosome and start spooling it over and it'll start here and the, all of this would have to spool in in order to pull the F factor in. That's the last thing that would come in. That would require the sex pill is to stay intact for a very long period of time, like a couple of hours. Um, and that actually rarely happens in nature. So it's very rare that the recipient cell is, is going to gain the F factor and actually become HFR itself. Very, very rare. All right, so um, high frequency should tell you that this mode of conjugation is a really effective way to change cells. So it's much more effective, in fact, than simple conjugation. You get a lot more genetic change in, in nature through this mode of 
um, recombination or change. Now from a practical point of view or a science practical point of view, um, conjugation was discovered uh, quite some decades ago in the, in the early 50s and uh, it was used to generate the first map of E. coli, our favorite uh, prokaryotic model organism. And that was done by, in fact, setting up mating experiments where you knew that you had different alleles of genes of interest that were distributed around the E. coli genome. And you therefore were able to screen the cells that were the result of HFR combination for phenotypes of interest and determine whether they had gained them or not. And then uh, these clever scientists determined that you could relate the gain of phenotypes to the time that the F pillars had been attached and intact, the time of the mating. So they set up a whole set of tubes and did what's called an interrupted mating experiment. And based on that, they determined in units of time the relative locations of these genes. So AZ, TON, LAC, and GAL are all genes in the E. coli genome. The little superscripts denote certain alleles. And because you don't have to mate E. coli with the resistant form of AZ and the non-resistant form of AZ for more than, you know, it's about nine minutes, they knew that that gene came in first. You know, at around 10 minutes, the TON allele was able to come in just around 18 minutes, the lac allele was come in, able to come in and the gal allele was able to come in at around 25 minutes. And so they were able to order these genes based on the time that it took in a mating experiment for the transfer of um, selected alleles into recipient cells, something called an interrupted mating experiment. And they used that to generate the first map of the E. coli chromosome, it should be italicized. And that was published in 1964, and the scientists that did that were Taylor and Thoman, or Thoman. All right. If you understood everything that was in this lecture, you could answer these questions. What is the F factor, and how can it be found in bacterial cells? Hint, plasmid, or integrated into the chromosome. Name one protein for which there is a gene in the F factor. Hint, you can't build a sex pillus without a particular protein. You could look that up. What are the two types of conjugation, and which is useful for mapping chromosomes? And what do you get out of these matings? An F plus by an F minus, an HFR by an F minus. These two are easy and I covered them. This requires a little critical thinking, okay? What's the name of the technique that was used to map the first E. coli chromosome? Who published the first map and in what year? And that concludes this lecture.